Join us for this workshop. We're looking at three different ovens and talking about their key differences. Hi everyone, welcome to this wood-fired workshop at Manor from Devon Cooking School. In this workshop we're looking at these three very different ovens and we're going to be talking about the differences between them and the differences in how they work. The three ovens we've got are the Bushman Santorini, the Alpha Four Pete and the Morso Forno and they are all fantastic examples of their types of ovens but all distinct. So we've got here a traditional oven or what I would call a traditional oven. So it's a full refractory or full masonry oven. So masonry floor and a masonry dome and by masonry I mean any clay, brick or refractory concrete. Absorbs lots of heat and is then very very well insulated. This oven, modern, uh, a modern iteration of the wood-fired oven. We've got an arch of stainless steel, an arch of insulation over the top, another arch of stainless steel on the outside, a refractory floor, so clay tiles on the floor, insulation under that. And then we've got more so cast iron oven, refractory floor, so Chamot clay floor in this case, uh, but no insulation. This version, although the manufacturer has given it a very funky design, is actually more akin to a 10,000 year old oven found all over Europe dating from Mesolithic times. And this, uh, this sort of oven, stainless steel, using laser cut stainless steel, very modern manufacture, many, many, very modern design, uh, so really only been around, this technology has really only been around for an, a matter of decades, as opposed to millennia. So uh, let's talk about heating up these ovens first of all. This oven has got, uh, and this is only a little oven, so it's only a 60 centimetre internal diameter oven, so a little domestic sized oven, but still in excess of 100 kilos of thermal mass. So that's the material which absorbs heat and then holds on to that heat. So to get this oven up to temperature to start with, I need to put quite a lot of energy into it. Otherwise, it's rather unstable in temperature. <clears throat> so it needs a little bit of preheating, a little bit of time spent in preparation for that. But once it's hot, it becomes very stable, holds on to that heat very well uh, and gives you the ability to cook hot and fast or long and slow or anything in between. Very, very versatile piece of kit. This oven, uh, a, a sort of medium sized oven I would call this, 60 centimetres deep, 80 centimetres across, but rectangular, so actually a lot more capacity than, than this one, but only 33 kilos of thermal mass in the floor. So uh, not so much mass there to hold on to heat. The benefit of stainless steel is that once it gets hot, which is a matter of minutes, it starts to reflect all of its heat back into the oven. So we get a lot of intense heat very, very quickly. And the floor heats up very, very quickly. So in the blink of an eye, in 15 minutes, I can be ready from cold to cooking pizzas almost in this oven. Whereas this oven is much more likely to take me 45 minutes, perhaps an hour before I'm cooking pizzas. Still insulated, so it doesn't get hot on the outside and uses very small amounts of wood to maintain its temperature. This oven, cast iron, deliberately made so that it releases heat. So there's no insulation on the outside of this oven. So it emanates heat, gives off this lovely warm glow, just like uh, an Argo or a Rayburn in your kitchen will give off a lovely warm glow and is beautiful to gather around. But that means, of course, that in order to maintain heat, I need to keep a lot more fire going inside the oven. <coughs> Still has a refractory floor, so that needs some preheating, 
were I wanting to cook directly on the floor and cook pizzas on the floor of the oven. Uh, so I'd certainly be giving that a good heating up. But once I've got this hot, uh, if I want to keep it at a, at a temperature to maintain cooking, then I'm going to have to keep feeding it quite a lot of uh, a lot of wood, and it's going to burn through a lot more fuel. Uh. Of course, a lot of the process you'll go through when choosing uh, which oven you want to buy or what sort of oven you want to buy is about aesthetics. And all of these ovens, I think, have a very clearly different aesthetic. So this very modern, chic, shiny, stainless steel uh, Alpha will fit some things where the rather funky, groovy looking, rounded, more so oven will fit others and the more traditional Bushman will sit comfortably in a different space uh, again. Now of course there are many different versions of these ovens. So this oven can come in lots of different sizes, lots of different brands, lots of different price points and lots of different quality standards, shall we say. Likewise these literally hundreds of different uh, versions on the on the market lots of price points from several hundred pounds to many thousands of pounds some of that to do with the size some of that to do with the quality of the materials used and uh, certainly both the examples we've got here neither of these are the cheapest um, on the market by any means but they are both fantastic quality uh, this one really a bit of an outlier doesn't have um, many competitors on the market uh, as far as I know uh, so it's kind of a standalone item. In terms of cooking with these ovens uh, they'll all cook a range of food and they'll all cook it fantastically well when they are handled correctly. This oven probably the most versatile because uh, once it's hot and very stable. It has fantastic uh, ability to retain heat as well as to generate lots of heat inside. So we can cook pizzas by the dozen uh, all day long and we can cook uh, long slow cooks overnight using all of its retained heat or over a period of probably 12 hours using uh, retained heat. Um, and everything in between. So it'll bake beautiful bread, it'll make fantastic cakes, it'll cook great stews, all of that, and uh, often with very little attention paid to anything. Because especially with those long slow cooks, it really looks after itself. This oven, very quick to heat up, so very good if uh, you're quite spontaneous in your cooking, shall we say, and think it's a lovely day, let's nip outside and cook. You can nip outside with a handful of sticks almost and have this oven up to temperature in 15 or 20 minutes, cook a quick lunch and forget about it and it's all done uh, with great speed and with little cost. And, and you can still cook a fantastic range of food, however when things want to take a cook for a little bit longer, because this oven doesn't have such great stability, then you're going to have to work a little bit harder to do those sorts of dishes. Uh, so it'll cook with retained heat for two or three hours quite comfortably. Longer than that and you might find you have to return and do a little bit of uh, reheating of the oven. This oven with no insulation really requires uh, a lot more attention. I would say almost constant attention, not quite constant, but uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much got to have a fire running all the time or a bed of embers that need refreshing regularly. <coughs> bit of smoke there. Uh, to maintain its temperature. So a little bit harder work. But fa fantastic for quick cooks and uh, longer things if you're prepared to put in the time and happy to be around uh, keeping an eye on things. In terms of ability to move these ovens once you've got them. This oven is fantastic in that it comes as a kit of parts, which means it's easy to bring it all in and assemble it in place. Once it's in place, it weighs about, I think about 160 kilos, so uh, it's quite an undertaking to move it. This one comes on a stand with wheels on it, 
and I can easily wheel it back and forth up and down the garden. Not really over rough terrain, shall we say, but um, uh, I can certainly move it around. And if I was ever to move house, I could very easily take this oven with me. This oven does um, often sits on a, on a nice table with very heavy duty rollers which make it very easy to move around uh, but it is a heavy lump of cast iron so you know it does take some heft to uh, to lift it on and off although it comes apart and I can I can move it on my own but certainly no problem at all to move this one uh, were you able to move house and in both of these cases I can easily wheel them into a garage or into a shed or under cover for the winter and wheel them out again in the spring and use them through the through the summer this one i've pretty much got to decide where it's going to go because once it's there it's probably not moving again i hope that's given you some insight into the key differences between stainless steel refractory and cast iron ovens if you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up subscribe to our youtube channel and if you've got any questions about this or any other topic related to wood-fired ovens, please put it in the comments below and we will respond to you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.